So it'll be my pleasure to talk today about Asian flower arranging, and it's quite significantly different from Western flower arranging. Uh, there's a lot of symbolism, and I'm really pleased to talk about it um, because of its roots in Japan, but also the origins coming back from China. So I'll start with this arrangement right here. And this one is really a, a wonderful style. It dates to around a thousand years ago and represents the six elements. Often we think about uh, the metal element, water, wind, fire, and earth. In this arrangement here, we also add the idea of space and then wind, which comes back and fire, which comes forward. At the center, there's soul. And then coming down in a cascade would be water and then coming straight out would be earth. And what's really significant about the six elements in this style of Ikebana is that from all of these pieces, whether it's soul and this style here, which is the, the space element, which would be used in prayer arrangements, I'll show a little bit later, but this style here you might see in the late fall or winter and there's always in flower arrangement the idea of the auspicious elements of, uh, of nature. So here we have the pine and chrysanthemums and so the pine represents everlasting life or eternity because it will not change color for a thousand years. So it's a very very auspicious style. Uh, right beside it here we have one that if I would think about the contrast between yin and yang, or maybe a, something that's more powerful and then something softer and more gentle, if we think about the sun and the moon, here we have a container that's in the shape of the moon, and then a cascade that comes down like this, a spray, which is representing maybe, could be, for example, the idea of water that's echoed. So here we have a very yin style arrangement, and here a very yang style arrangement. We might wonder uh, about the function of ikebana or flower arranging in the home. And I think that in the distant past, the flower offerings were often offered in temples to the Buddha or to the ancestors. But as the practice of people and the peace that they were experiencing in their life or merchant class or the aristocracy, they were able to enjoy beautifying the home with flower arrangements. And we'd like to do that again today as well too. So we'll go and we'll have a look at some other arrangements. So here we see um, a very kind of beautiful arrangement of a screen and then in front maybe some elements. And so this would be something we might see in the summertime. And you can see we've got low arrangements. The water in the painting is reflecting the water that's in the arrangement here and the arrangements are trying not to interfere with the painting. So there's often a collaboration between the flower arranging and the home environment. And the arrangements would have been set traditionally off to the side. So unlike a Western bouquet that might be in the center of a table, what I really love about um, the Chinese or the Japanese or the Asian arrangements is that they're really drawing the eye to another part of the room where you can enjoy it. So here we have uh, an element that could represent maybe the idea of wind. And in this one, we're enjoying the space that's down in here. And then just a little pair of flowers. You can imagine maybe a, a friend that's coming to visit. And so the, the flower arrangement represents that relationship between the two friends that are visiting, or maybe a, a mother and child or a parent or somebody like that. This one over here, I would mentioned earlier the idea of the space element. And so this one is called uh, inoribana, or prayer flowers. And we see this, the idea of two hands set together and this idea of going up towards the sky or up towards the divine. And then all the flowers that are coming down in a kind of a cascade. Something that might be a little different in Asian flower arranging is that there are some flowers that are here behind. They're not all in the front where we can see them. And this idea of something that's hidden is something that's really um, beautiful to bring out when we're looking at flower arranging. So when we're doing flower arranging, we're um, really enjoying as students or as teachers being in harmony with the seasons. So a summer scene with boats along a river and then we have the glass or the coolness of the water and hydrangeas that would be blooming in the summer. So always we're trying to be in harmony with the season and I think of 
The people that were living in Asia and long in the past and even to the present, they were very much in connection with nature. The planting of the rice season, its harvest, many festivals and special occasions. And so even the flower arrangements would be reflecting that passing of the seasons. So it's a really wonderful way to reflect what's happening outside, inside the home. So we've been talking a little bit about the elements so far, so space and fire, wind, water, earth, and soul. But I'd like to introduce another style, and this one is quite interesting because it's reflection of the universe. So if you imagine there's one, two, three flowers and some supporting leaves, this represents heaven, humanity, and earth. But it also, if you imagine that we are to draw a line around it, it would represent the earthly square set as a diamond and around the entire arrangement would be a circle and that circle represents the heavenly sphere. So this type of arrangement represents the universe, the totality, the balance between yin and yang divided along into a triangular shape like you see here. So we've got um, a chest and a flower arrangement and then a painting. And so there's a kind of harmony or balance between these. And then the way that we decorate in the home, we often say that we want the arrangement to be looking at the painting or this kind of idea. So the flowers are sort of offset and that's also part of the, I wanna say maybe the, the humility of the arrangement. It's not like flowers staring at you in the face. So there's always this kind of discovery that happens for the viewer. Over here, um, this arrangement is, uh, well, it might be difficult to see it as a floral arrangement because it seems like a collection of branches. And what I can do is I can just rotate it slightly here for you to see. But this style is called Seika or living flowers. And again, it represents the idea of heaven and humanity and earth. And again, this idea of the the diamond of the earth and the sphere that goes around it, so the balance of yin and yang. So when we talk about flower arranging in the Asian tradition, it doesn't necessarily just have to be about flowers like the one I just showed, but it could also be about trees and branches. So um, it's quite fascinating to be using the power and the strength of trees and coupling it with the delicacy of the flowers like we see in this arrangement here. So this is yet another style um, that is a, an abstraction of the previous forms we've seen. And so we've got the fire element coming up, maybe a cascade down here of water and of earth, and in the center we have this element of soul. And this style, which is uh, referred to as heika, represents, to me it represents uh, hope. So if we imagine that a tree, if the vase were a tree trunk and it were cut off, even a tree trunk that's been cut off will have some new growth that comes in. And to me that represents, you know, even if we face a hardship or a challenge, then the new growth that comes. So whenever I see an arrangement like this, I really feel filled with hope. It's a very inspiring style of arrangement. Um, these ones here are kind of giving us a feeling of the fall. Uh, and so the rustic style of the branches, the stone and the vase as well is very kind of uh, a rustic ambiance. So items in the vases are just as important in flower arranging as the symbolism of the forms themselves. Let's have a look at this one here. This arrangement um, is a really fascinating triplicate of the universe. So I've been talking about this idea of heaven, humanity, and earth, but we also see there's one, two, three stones here. It might be a little hard to see behind the wood. In the late fall, we don't really want to um, feel or see uh, water because it makes us feel rather cold, but um, that's why it's being hidden by this, this sort of piece of wood here. But these three stones also have a kind of symbolism. So the groupings, this one for heaven, this one for humanity, and this one for earth have a symbolism. But there's also a guardian stone, an ancestor stone, and then at the very bottom here, there's an earth stone or a humility stone. So I like too that there's a reflection even in choosing the water and the stone. Again, we have that idea of the yin and the yang as part of the arrangement and that we can have everything grouped together as we saw or separated into three. 
Uh, I'll mention now that numerology is very important in Asian flower design. So I'm sure you've heard of the number eight as being almost a symbol for infinity, but it's a very, very powerful and auspicious number, for example, in China. In uh, Japan, they really prefer odd numbers, so they consider the yang numbers to be one, three, five, seven, etc. So you notice there's one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and a grouping of one, two, three. So again, this idea of the emperor and his attendants, or a parent and their child. You know, so there's always this idea of, of the three, and I think it's quite interesting that in the Western culture, we also have a connection with three and divinity as well, too. I'll have a look at this last one over here. And this arrangement again is, is showing that the branch element and then the abundance of flowers in the center that this center or human element, we often move it. Sometimes it's at the front of the arrangement, sometimes it's in the middle, sometimes it's in the back, sometimes it's in the side, or we can have a combination where we have everything like this. So um, always in, in flower arranging in the East, there's this really uh, powerful attention to the, the incredible shadows that we're seeing on the wall here, and even just the movement of the branches themselves. They're so sculptural, and it's a really wonderful way to uh, give our appreciation to nature and really feel not only in harmony with the seasons, not only inspired by the message that we feel with the arrangements, um, but also just knowing that we're giving a sense of peace and enjoyment to our guests when they visit our home. So a little bit about some of the tools that we use. Um, this one here is called, uh, it's a little threatening, it's called a bed of spears. In Japanese they refer to it as kenzan. And the sharp little picks allow us very easily to just place the flowers or the branches right into the container. So this style is used by some schools of flower arranging and it's very wonderful for beginners to try using these. You can find these here in Ottawa at Lee Valley Tools. Um, the style of uh, Ikebana that I do use is this style, which is called a shippo. And it has this interlocking circles that allow us to stand branches at all of these different angles. So although it might be a little challenging to use, the nice thing about it is that it allows the, the water to come really freely up into the flower. Uh, here's another type of holder, and then this one is a uh, western style. So you can see that the size of the holes will restrict the options we have if we wanted to put a branch or something else in it. But also the positions of the holes will also inhibit us from a little bit of creativity. Uh, it's very beautiful to look at, it would be perfect for a bouquet, so you might enjoy something like that. And uh, these are often referred to as frogs. Something about the scissors that are used uh, in flower arranging. Uh, Ikebana shears are a little bit different because they come all the way open, like as they, you can see here. So sometimes if we're trying to carve a branch, or you can see we can put a, quite a large tree inside there. And I was always amazed that my, uh, my very small Japanese teacher, she could hold these and cut clear through a very, very large branch. So there's a kind of technique that we use. Um, we open, we use two fingers like this, and we can saw through things little by little with the teeth that are kept sharp. Um, so Ikebana scissors, uh, you can also use just regular clippers or garden scissors or anything like that that you like to make your arrangement. And so a little final uh, celebration of spring, we're here in the springtime. So a painting and then reflecting a little sense of that, a little example little of um, the spring. So here we've got a lot of water, a water course or stream flowing through the arrangement. This is a spring arrangement and right here right now in Ottawa we're seeing a lot of these little plants that are growing up. So we can also um, have a sense of again heaven, humanity and earth and the two are separated. So very very small amounts of flowers, very few flowers are used in Asian flower design. I'm sure you've heard the expression less is more and and uh, the same is true with the space that we enjoy in a painting or the space that we enjoy in an arrangement and the space that's created in between the branches too. So it's a very um, minimal, sometimes people will use the term Zen, uh, I think it, in the sense that it comes from the Buddha, really just the idea of reflection, peace and tranquility and it gives us a sense of enjoyment. Um, 
People may think that flower arranging is a rather difficult thing to learn. Uh, when I was living in Asia, I spent about seven years studying it every week, and I made three or four arrangements a week in my class. So it is for sure something you can spend a long, long time studying. However, even people that are beginners or new to this art of flowering arranging can create beautiful works like this by following simple prescriptions that we have. So we'll often have, for example, the diameter of the container and then we'll use a certain proportion to determine the height of the flowers. And this flower will be one and a half times the diameter of the container and this may be two thirds of that or one third of another. So throughout the different schools of Ikebana or flower arrangement that exists, many of the different schools use different terminology for their flowers. Uh, they may have different proportions or different formulas or recipes for their arrangements. But I think all of them, what unifies all of the arranging is this idea of the simplicity, enjoying branches, enjoying the harmony with the seasons, really looking towards um, the beauty of the container and trying to find a harmony with all of those things.